6.33 for sure. Stand with me tonight. Let's go to the Lord in prayer if you can. I want to also welcome our folks that are there online. And uh, listen, it's good to see people coming back into the house on Wednesday night. So thankful. And uh, I want to encourage anybody maybe that's watching online, uh, maybe that's thinking about, hey, you know what, been out of prayer for a while. We want to encourage you that through your prayer, if it's time to come back, you come on. Uh, been having, and I want to say this. Why don't Let's just give a shout out to all our kids tonight. Man, there's probably 40 or 50 kids in the house. So thankful for all of them. Appreciate Josh and Jenna's heart to do that. And for you folks that are watching online, we split that up into two different groups, second through fifth and sixth and all up middle school and high school together. And doing that, and sometimes they even split that upper group off a little bit more, too. Um, it's my understanding, uh, I think Josh... Friday night, you have uh, something. What is that age group? It's on screen. Thank you. So, second through fifth grade, they're going to be having a night here. We're just enjoying the time, devotion, all of that. And then they got some other stuff planned. And I think it's already tied to that group. So, looking forward to that. How many of you are thankful that you're part of the kingdom? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's all pray together. Heavenly Father, we adore you tonight. As we come to you in the precious name of Jesus, we are so thankful. We are so thankful for your goodness and your grace. God, we come tonight surrendering our agenda. We come right now laying down, God, every problem and picking up a promise. We ask tonight, precious Holy Spirit, that you just move in every soul that's in this place. And God, just give Jake and Stephanie just a, a double portion tonight as they lead us in worship. God, we're thankful tonight that uh, we know that you can absolutely wreck any plan that the enemy has. So, God, tonight, any obstacles, any hindrances, any of those things, we just bind those in your precious name, Jesus. So, God, tonight, let our worship be one of unity. Hallelujah. And let this be a night that, God, as we worship you on this Wednesday,
Amen. He can take what the enemy meant for evil and turn it for good. Amen. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Sing it if you believe it. You take what the enemy meant for turn it for good you turn it for good you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good and i'm gonna see your victory i'm gonna see your victory for the battle belongs to declare that over your life tonight. See a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. And I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see turn it for good you turn it for good you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good and I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory Give the battle to him. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Amen. Let's give God a hand tonight. Amen. This love is 
control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you. time in any one of those age groups, um, you can just follow that crowd right there and they'll get you sorted out when you get back there. Praise God. Is it okay if we just if we just bask for just a moment in his presence? Is it? You see, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. And the life which I now live, I don't live through the church. I don't live through the preacher. I don't live through the prayer. I live through the faith of the Son of God. Gave himself for me. Are you bold enough tonight to say, Lord, wreck me? Break me. I'll trade my agenda for your anointing. type of schism can wreck the purpose of the body. I'm crucified with Christ. There's a lot of names throughout the course of history that if I were to mention them, Julius Caesar, just different ones, I could, I could just go through a whole list different ones throughout the course of time. All those names are dead and gone. But there's one name. And there's one man that was dead, but now he's alive. Does anybody know who I'm talking about? See? Because there's 
no other name given under heaven whereby men must be saved. There's no other name that will stop a demon in its track. There's no other name that will set a drug addict free. There's no other name that will restore a marriage other than Jesus. How many of you are thankful tonight that there's still power in that name? There's still power in that name. Come on, can't we give him some praise? Some Wednesday night praise. Jake, you sing a song called Isn't the Name of Jesus. Young boy in my early 20s before Amy and I was married. Hell tried its best to put a grip around my, my neck one night as I was getting ready to go to sleep. I remember I didn't call on the name of my preacher. I didn't call on Billy Graham. I didn't call on anybody else. But I called on the name of Jesus and that enemy took his hands off my neck. You may be here tonight and you may feel like that the enemy has got your whole life, man. And he just got you wrapped up. Listen, you need to learn it before you shout it. that name saved me, that that man healed me, that that man delivered me, that he restored me, that he set me free. When you start gaining that momentum, listen, Jack, there's a, locomo there's a locomotive on the inside of you, man, that hell can't stop. Boy, you got to feed that fire. You got to feed that fire. Tonight, I want to say this. I don't want to be sacrilegious in any way, but I dare you to worship. I dare you. Bill, I, 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 I love to watch people worship. Y'all are thinking, man, my, my pastor's a creeper. <laughs> no. I just love to see when people get in that zone, Jack. Bill, my mind went back and I don't mean to point you out. Bill was sold out a few minutes ago, man. He was just head slicked back. Hands up, eyes closed. Praising the king. And Bill, my mind went back to in those days, early days of COVID. He was in a chair right out here in the parking lot. Don't let anybody or anything take your breath. You let anything keep you from worshiping God. You ain't got to worship like me, and y'all are going, Phew. I'm a crybaby. I say all that, man, just to say, as he gets ready to sing, I just, I just ain't got over that hill. I still ain't over the hill.
God is good. Let's turn to the Gospel of Luke. Uh, I'm thinking 22, 23. Let's head in that direction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luke chapter Word of God said as they led him away. They laid hold upon one Simon, a Cyrenian, coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. And there followed him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in which they shall say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear, and the paps which never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills cover us. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? Verse 32. And there was also two others, malefactors or criminals, led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment, they cast lots, and the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with him derided him, saying, He saved others. He saved others. Let him save himself. If he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him, and offered him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of Jews, save thyself. And a superscription also was written over him in the letters of the Greek and of Latin and of Hebrew, saying, This is the king of the Jews. And one of the criminals or malefactors, which were hang railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, 
Save thyself and us. <laughs> if thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other, say, but the other. Answering, rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God? Do you not fear God? Seeing that you're in the same condemnation or the same sentence. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deed. But this man, he's done nothing to miss. He ain't done nothing wrong. We're getting what we deserve. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me. Lord, remember me when thou come into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And it was about the sixth hour. And there was darkness all over the earth until the ninth hour from twelve to three. And the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was rent in twain. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said that, he gave up the ghost. Now, when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly, certainly this was a righteous man. And all the people that came together to the site, beholding the things that were done, smoked their breast and returned. And all his acquaintance and the women that followed him from Galilee stood afar off, beholding these things. Heavenly Father, what a powerful word. God, I'm so thankful for something more than is just the ink on a page and another story. It's your story. It's his story. It's my story. And it's our story. Precious Holy Spirit, do what you do. Let us see, God, the power released at Calvary and how that through this model that we can truly gain life <laughs> and life so abundant. We love you, Jesus. It's in your name. Amen and amen. Before you sit down, turn to somebody and say, have you ever been there? Have you ever been there? We've been taking this road trip now for three or four weeks, uh, a good while, and just because of repetition and to remind you, man, we went from the River Jordan. We went from where it was baptized. We went to the Mount of Transfiguration. We've been to the Garden of Gethsemane. And now, as we continue to climb upward, we're at Calvary. We're at Calvary. There is no symbol in all of humanity, nor has there ever been, and even the golden arches and even apple that represents itself with, with that picture or with that, uh, that very thing that has an apple with a bite taken out of it or any of the other things that, that you may see that become iconic according to brand. There's nothing that is more recognized than the cross. And the thing today is that much of the church recognizes it and much of the world recognizes it, but just because you recognize it doesn't mean that you respect it. Last Sunday when I was speaking of the young preacher, the evangelist, that as he was going to and coming away actually from a meeting and was kind of heckled, if you will, from some young people that were there giving disrespect maybe to the word and not valuing the message of the cross and I told you of how that he began to pin those words on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross that song actually become maybe criticized to the point because some people wanted to say that it was not the cross and it wasn't the cross was simply what the old song said it was an emblem of suffering and shame, but it was more than that. And, and see, when people wear a cross around their neck, do they really understand that it would be so much better if we would carry a cross on our shoulder instead of linked with gold around our neck? If you have a cross around your neck, uh, not 
intending to preach to you and bring you under condemnation. But the power of the cross is this, is that when we can say I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Not only did Jesus Christ die on that hill, but listen, hear me tonight, I died on that hill. You say, how does that mean anything? Or what are you trying to say? Is that every sin that I've ever committed died right there at Calvary. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? And so when hell tries to come and condemn and tell you, you've done all of this and you've done all that, God the Father says, hold on a minute, according to my word, and how many of you still believe in the power and the truth of the word? He said, your sin is cast as far as the east is from the west. Amen, somebody. So hell's always going to fish within the puddles of your mind, the mud puddles and the muck, and it's always going to try to fish for something to bring up against you. But I'm telling you, we need a church. We need a believing bunch, man, within this county. I'm not talking about in a building. I'm talking about a unified group of people that will declare that I am free because Jesus Christ died for my sin. Maybe. It took me a long time, Amy, to realize I died there that day. I said, hold on a minute. You 55. This is 2,000 years ago. He died for each and every one of us. And everything, your sin, my sin, had to be put to death. And there's so many Christians today that live such a weak and anemic life because they keep breathing into the old man of who they were. You need to declare today. You need to declare today that greater is he that is living on the inside of me than he that is in the world. You can go ahead and start declaring to yourself and believing it and speaking it over the prince, the power of the air, that listen, I can't just do some things. I don't just do a few things, but I can do all things. through G- Anybody know what I'm talking about? That when you get to that place, and listen, tomorrow morning I'll guarantee you before you meet the man in the mirror or ladies before you meet the woman in the mirror and you and Maybelline or whoever hook up, I've got to tell you that you are the assignment of hell and hell wants to take your joy. It wants to... St- you can let it. Or you can get some Holy Ghost boldness and let it begin to run up the ridge of your back and get into your mind and declare, not today, devil, not today. You ain't can't have my joy. That's what the cross did. Had it not been for the cross and not just for Jesus paying for some of my sins, but paying for all of my sins. He would still have right entry into my life. And today so many people live that kind of life that, well, I just can't forgive myself. Can I tell you, you're trying to make yourself bigger than God because if God forgive you, who are you not? Somebody say, I'm crucified with Christ. On that cross 2,000 years ago, on that hill that was 777 meters, 2,500 and I think 62 feet above sea level. There at the pinnacle of everything within all of humanity. Everything before is measured before and everything after that day is measured after. What am I talking about? I'm thankful today that I don't have to live an Old Testament law. And I'm thankful that the Old Testament in my life has been paid for by the blood. And I'm thankful today for a New Testament that is being formed and forged right now in my life. Anybody understand? That right now, he's still writing your story. Take the pen out of your hand, give it to him, and say, Jesus, write my ending. We don't give enough credit to Calvary. Well, bless me, God. I died there. I died there. But didn't you do this? Didn't you do that? Well, I did. But you're looking for an old man. That old man don't live here anymore. 
I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by going to church, by singing the new praise song, by getting close to the preacher, by getting in the praise team, uh -uh. but by the renewing. Come on, somebody. Some of you need to get your mind renewed. Oh, today is just like yesterday. It is if you want it to be. But praise be to God, I can cry all night. But there's joy that comes for me in the morning. I'd love to see a bunch of believers get so much joy that it would just absolutely pour out of them. I'd love to see the joy of the Lord go outside the church building and hit people at the gas station. Hit people in a Walmart line. Hit them people that look like they was weaned on pickle juice. And just drive up beside them at the red light and they look it over at you. I got to get me some flash cards. Amy, remind me to make me a sign. Jesus loves you. Huh? Here's what I'm trying to say tonight. That you are a new creature. Old things have passed away. And behold a few. Some. No. Somebody shout all. All things have become new. That means my marriage. Hold on preacher. That's off limits. Your marriage can become new. Your life can become new. Your relationship to your kids can become new. Guess what? I love seeing people transform. I was talking to some real good friends of mine day before yesterday. Yesterday, I spent some time with them, and they was counseling me. It was good. Enjoyed it. And they was talking about, she was talking about this little one that was right next to her, some of her kinfolk Sunday morning. I love watching people transform. I watch y'all. Little baby girl about six, seven. Worship just going, just kicking. She went like this, Tyler. She, she said, I looked over. Lady telling me, she said, I looked over and said, her little hand was. Then drank a little bit more. By the end of it, pow. What happened to her? She quit looking at other people and started looking to him. That's when God transforms you. Remember? Do you remember when y'all a kid and, and you just you danced and didn't care who paid attention to you? You remember, man, when the groove came, you just grooved with it? There's a new groove now. It's him. It's him. And man, I love seeing people get in his presence. And I love him watch. I love to watch him melt people's pride, Brother David. And they eyes start streaming. Whew, I've said it, I bet, a hundred times. May, may I don't know. I shouldn't be betting. I know I've said it several times before. But I love seeing the Holy Ghost make Maybelline a liar. Because, man, that stuff will run. And I love seeing that war paint ladies come out on you. And you don't care. You ain't even caring about your hair. You ain't caring about nothing. And people looking at you, but you don't even care because you're looking to him. That's when you start interacting with God. That's when you understand, wait a minute, I'm crucified with Christ. That cross was more than a symbol. It's more than an icon. It's more than something that should represent Christianity. It was a curse. The Word of God said this, and that's the reason that the Jews struggled so much with it and the reason that they navigated it. We could go into a deep line of teaching here, but they navigated, the Jewish leaders navigated it so he would be there on a cross so that it would be the Roman execution. Why is that? Because the Jews knew that any man that hangs on a cross is cursed. And the tree represents the curse. What's that mean to me? Everything. 
Because if that's true, and it is according to Scripture, cursed is the man that hangeth on the tree. Guess what? For those of you who said, I'm never going to do better. My daddy was this. My mama was that. And you feel like you're living under a family curse. Can I tell you, that curse died at Calvary. Can I talk to anybody tonight? That curse died, and that curse was broken 2,000 years ago. You don't have to be an alcoholic like your daddy was an alcoholic. You ain't got to gripe and complain like your mama did. You ain't got to gripe and complain and curse like your daddy did. You've got a heavenly father that wants to change it all I love seeing people man and you can tell when the curse gets broke they get free Jack I mean they get free they're like who something lifted one of the most common things that I hear and I always love to hear is this is this Jim is that when people get up they say oh man I feel like a, a million pounds or a load's been lifted Stephen you've heard it haven't you at the altar can I tell you what that is? Sin. That's the curse. But every bit of that has been broken. Isn't it good today to know that you are no longer living under the curse of sin? That you are free, hallelujah, to worship God. Isn't that amazing? Brother Wayne, I wish I had a pinwheel. I'd blow it right now. It's more than that. It's living in the victory of who he is. Living in that place. There's challenges that come with that. If I were to take you back to Luke chapter 4, I could show you. And, and remember that God is God of pattern. And hell knows that if you were to go back to the beginning verses of Luke chapter 4, you will see the temptation of Christ there in the wilderness. And you will see the same things, two out of the three at least, that he's challenged you with right here, Vanessa, that when you look at that, you'll see him challenged with basically the same thing that he was challenged with in the wilderness. And you know what it came down to? Identity. Now the disciples say, this can't be. He can't be who he said he was. This can't be. But what's the rest of them say? If you are, then... I can't believe they did that. No. How many times have you and I put him in the same spot? If you are. I'm always leery of people that throwing a fleece out, man, every time they get a chance. Can I tell you, all this time you spent, I'm putting a fleece out with God. Sound holy. Can I tell you, if you'd read his word, you'd find out that you wouldn't spend all your time focusing on the fleece. You'd focus on the blood that the fleece came from and say, God, I don't know how it's going to shake out, but I know you with me. Who? what peace. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So what happens there with him again is identity. Pilate's already said it. Are you or not? As he attributes the lines of what is truth, all of these things now are coming to a head. If you are who you say you are, And what's going on today in this world? So you're a Christian. If you are who you say you are, come down here where I'm living. Stay with me. What did Satan do? He took him to a high pinnacle. He took him to the mountain, didn't he? All of this. He said this, Rick. He said, every bit of this is yours. You can have all of these kingdoms. You can have power over these kingdoms. You can have it all. But. You got to worship me. Isn't that powerful? For the thought today that all Satan wants is your worship. And how many Sundays has he been victorious in your life and mine? I can't worship God today. Really? Why? Well, my wife. I can't worship God today, Luke. My husband. My kids. He got you. Can I tell y'all something? What would happen one Sunday morning if we come in this place, all of us so focused, and I'm talking about laser focused, lockstep, man praising the king. What would happen if we all come in here and say, I done got shit of my junk 
And Lord, I ain't here to do nothing but worship you today. What would happen? Maybe people leave. <laughs> Maybe people leave. I've seen people leave for a lot less. But God comes through and go, and people start trembling. People get weak in their knees. People start coming. I always like when, when people come for the first time and, you know, y'all y'all don't know nothing about altar call. Because y'all come for it ain't no altar call. People see you come, and they see you come to a place. And you don't just bow your head. You don't just bow your knees. You bow your heart. And you get up in here, man, and people look at them like, this church doesn't know how to do nothing. Because I don't know what they're looking for, but somebody dropped their contact up there, and they all looking for it. <laughs> no, what would happen if the praise team, I'm going to wear you all out right now. Any of you watching online, you getting it too. What would happen if the praise team said, I can't see. What happens when the preacher can't preach? That's when God shows up. Because he said, hey, you don't have to do nothing. I just want to show up. If I had an opportunity to sit down with my mom again, I'm going to. I'm going to one day after a while. I'm going to, Dennis. I always think about you, Pat. I'm going to. But I think if I did... I think I just sat down and I just look at her. I don't know what I'm gonna do when I get to grow. I don't know how many thousand years. I don't know how long it's gonna take me to get up. But I'm gonna tell you I ain't gonna be in no hurry. Y'all looking at you, watch. We need to get out of here. I'm telling you, you better watch that. You may not get into heaven because heaven ain't got no clock. <laughs> and what would happen if we just said, Lord, I just want to stay here at your toes. I ain't got to worry about nobody being healed. I ain't got to worry about nobody being fed. I ain't got to worry about church people being happy. All I got right now is just you. And you all that matters. I'll tell y'all something. What if I told you we ain't got to wait to do that? When you crucify with Christ, you can do that. Because you did the self. Some of y'all self, boy. I got this word in the Holy Ghost. I said, God, y'all y'all got to know. I just, Holy Ghost just dropped stuff in my mind. I said, Holy Ghost, what's wrong with some people? He said, you got too many storm chasers. I said, what? He said, you got people all time in a tornado because they all time chasing a storm. They life always a mess. Because that's all they do is chase a storm. Hear me, church people. That's for you. Quit chasing the storm. Get still in his presence. Stephanie, I'm going to give you a word. It's for more than you. How many of y'all have felt pretty dry over the past year at different times? When I say dry, I'm talking about spiritually, you understand? Like, I hear a lot of people say, man, I'm just dry. I'm going to give you all something that I believe the Lord gave me. I said, Lord, there's a lot of people dry, like Ezekiel 37. I thought that way was tight. He said, no. Holy Ghost just took me on a little ride. I said, let's go to the Valley of Elah. I said, I know where that is, Holy Ghost. I said, that's where David got them stones. Holy Ghost reminded me, that wasn't no valley. That was a riverbed that dried up. 
Now let me help somebody. Quit cursing the dryness because without a dry river bed, there ain't no stone to kill your giant. God, what am I doing here? Pick up the stone. Pick up the stone. I'm talking to somebody. I'm going to preach that again to some people that's ready to receive it. I don't know where. But I'm telling you right now, for those of you that have whined, moaned, and complained, hello, me too. Holy Ghost said, I dried that river up just so you could have a stone. To kill your giants. Is that clear enough? Because so many of, so many today are being shifted. So many. You got to decide. All these things that we've shown and the identity that when you look at Luke 4, all these things that come against him, hell wants your worship. i got a question. Can he have it? If your worship is built on self, Satan already has it. I will tell you the greatest majority of the times that you are broken, it's because of something about you. When is the last, or myself, let me just include me, let me say we. When's the last time we just came and broke? Because America's slaughtering babies. When's the last time we just came and broke? Because we can't even define, much less deliver the gospel. When's the last time we just broke down, stayed down? Holy Ghost kept us down. Until we said, Lord, give me revival or take me home. Brother Wayne, you're way too extreme. (laughs) We're living in extreme times. We're living in a day right now to where you better figure out who you're going to serve. So the next time (laughs) that you think, I don't even feel like worshiping. Lord, I know right now because my flesh is screaming at me not even to raise my hand. I'm going to raise my hand because I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I'm going to live. As he does all of this, and then there's these two that he's there, and, and, and the whole line of it, they're on this hill called Calvary, 777 meters, like I said before. And I told you I'd add a little bit to that last Sunday when I was preaching. Seven is God's complete number, and we've got it now triplified. That high, that highest pinnacle, that point. Could it be that the same way that when God, on the seventh day after he'd made it all, said, man, this is real good. He rested. And you know what he basically said? This done. And what did Jesus say? It is finished. It is done. You see, creation wasn't complete fully until the sacrifice is realized. You and I, the pinnacle, that's number six. We were born on this, or we were created on the sixth day. But there was Jesus. It is finished. It is finished. Those three words to me that you've heard me preach before are three of the most powerful words that you need to put into your memory and into your heart. Is that when Satan comes to attack and accuse, that Sharon at those times in our life, when he does those things, we can say and use the scripture, it is finished. It's paid for, Satan. You have no right. You have no place. The only way that he has place, Scripture proves it, give no place to the devil. You give him access, he'll take it every time. It won't be much longer. At the core of this, two two malefactors, two criminals. If you are... Look, look 
at the word today that that could be preached even from the criminal's mouth that was denouncing him. Save us. Save us. Save yourself if you are. And one, the other one. Hey, wait a minute. We're getting what we deserved. We live in a land of opportunity (laughs) that has become a land of enablement. You owe me. I really don't owe you anything other than to deliver this word to you and to tell you how much God loves you and to tell you that, man, you can be empowered from the Holy Ghost of God. Turn to somebody and say, you've got to be one or the other. You've got to be one or the other. I think one day I, I think I'll make it. Really? <laughs> Hell's full of thinkers. Some of the greatest minds that have ever that have ever walked a step on the face of this earth feel hell right now. That had it all figured out. The greatest and brightest of minds. Even theological minds fill the corridors of hell in its darkness. Because they thought. Because they never come to a place of knowing. Could you imagine, to me, this would be a hellish life. I'm saying this with all the love that's in me. Could you imagine living a life here on this earth? Helena, could you imagine living here and thinking, man, if I do enough good, when I die, I might make it. Do you know how many people are living that life today, Robin? Well, if I live good enough, My God, my God. The key in your life and in my life, being one or the other. I'll read it again. Verse 42. Can we put that on the screen, please? No doubt many were there that day. But he didn't look to any of the ladies that were at the cross. The criminal didn't. The malefactor didn't. He didn't look to the religious group. He didn't look over at the other guy at this point. (laughs) He didn't look to a preacher or a priest or anything else. He simply says this. He said unto Jesus, And as he says, Lord, he's looking at a, at a body that's been ravaged by a cat of nine tails, the, the strips of leather glass, or leather glass bone, all of those things that have tore his hide, his skin at the whipping post. He's looking at a man that Scripture would, would even say even before, all the way back to, uh, to Isaiah 53, that when we go all the way back there, and if we look upon him, there was nothing to desire and how much less today when he's scantily clad and mocked. And he looks at him and he says, Lord. And then he says this. Remember me. When every Everybody else, Jason, is thinking how they're going to get out of town before they get killed. And other people are getting ready to hit their chest and say, that's right. 
Steve, in the midst of all of that, only one. Remember me. When you come into your kingdom, Jesus has spent three and a half years, Heather. He spent three, three and a half years saying, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He, he's done all of this. We've, he's preached the Beatitudes. He's preached the Olivet Discourse just a few, uh, a few hours or, 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 or days earlier. He's done all of this. He's healed people. He's done all of that. And you have to understand that none of that was enough to get them to believe that He was the Son of God and He was the Christ. And one crack addict, one murderer, one adulterer, one liar. What's it take today? They seen more, that thief seen more in him than much of the church sees today. Why can't I get over the hill? Because he's seen more in me than you do. What did he see in me? He seen the cause. He seen the why, didn't he, Lord? Today we come in, we go out, been guilty. But what about that one? Jake, will you come? Steph, you can come too if you want. I don't know how y'all got it planned to end, but Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. What's he saying? Man, what a profound truth. The word kingdom there, when you look at that, represents at least three, at least three things. It's really easy. It's realm, rule, and royalty. When you study the word kingdom, it's basilius, and it, it means occupy, it means place, it, it, but it means those three things. And he says, when you come into your kingdom, and he spent all this time and everybody else has missed him. And what does he do? I love it, Leisha. I might rem Somebody say today, can I tell you the power? Sue, I've watched people come in and I've watched them leave. I've watched their grip so tight on pews and on seats. I've watched them almost in, uh, utter, uh, I'm almost in turmoil where they're sick. Because the Holy Spirit is contending so hard for their soul. And I've watched them battle. And how many have left and said, I'm glad that left. You better pray for it to come back. The thing today is today. I'm going to change tomorrow. Do y'all know how many diets I've started on Monday? Just me, right? Today. Pastor, it's not Sunday. Today. You don't have to wait till tomorrow to change. Turn to somebody and say, have you ever been there? Luke, you'll remember, I like using you as an example. Luke went, me, went with me in 2007. Rick, you went in 2011, is that correct? Been to Israel. How many of you would ever like to go to Israel? Okay. I'm going to remember that. Start saving your money. It'll be an unforgettable trip, and I hope in the right way, but... Luke, you will remember that we were there in Golgotha, the name, the place of the skull. Rick, you'll remember that it, it looked like two eye sockets. And when we were there, and right below it was a tomb. And it's called Gordon's tomb. And most people believe 
that right there that they just brought him down to what they call the garden tomb. There's another place that some people ascribe that he was buried. But it's called the garden tomb. And I remember, I'll never forget. And Luke, I don't know why my mind, I, I don't know. We go back and I'll never forget the first time. I'm getting a little bit ahead or of my next message on the tomb. But I'll never forget. Remember, Luke, we looked in that old tomb. Was he there? He wasn't there. But the tomb would mean nothing if we hadn't been to Calvary. So when I ask you, have you ever been there, Pastor? I ain't never been to Israel. I never. I want to go. Yes, you have. 2,000 years ago, you were there. Two thousand years ago, you were there. Before you were here in body, you were already in his mind and on his heart. Because before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. I had a purpose before you were anything. I create you for purpose. You were there two thousand years ago. What? He says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I died there. When, Pastor? Some people would say when I was 16, I think I really died out when I was about 30, 31. And that sweet anointing came, something. I got thinking about that. I thought, Lord. Then I'm reminded as I'm preaching this message that I died 2,000 years ago. Amen, Tyler. 2,000 years ago. Isn't that beautiful, Gwen? Isn't that beautiful to think? Pastor, why does that make a difference? Because if that's the case, then all that 2,000 years ago got to do with my past. And my past is paid for. When you look at the cross... And Eric, I think you can pull up that hill called Calvary. You remember those three crosses. If you can pull that picture up that you've got saved. When you look at a cross again, I want you to think that not only did he die there, but you died there. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. Won't you just go ahead and whisper the word today? Today. It can start right now. It can start right now. Today, I'm going to start living. Today, this addiction doesn't have hold on me. Today, this pornography, today, this hatred, today, today, the curse is broken. Sin is forgiven. Jake, there are some things that never get old. Let me tell y'all what never get old to me is I close. Never gets old, the fond memories I got of my mama and thinking about them. A buddy of mine yesterday was on the phone with his mama. He looked older than me, and his mama's older than both of us, of course. And she was from Germany, and as he was talking to her, he had it on speaker. And he said, Mama, it's so-and-so, and And I heard her dialect. And, boy, when I heard that German dialect, I thought, I'm fixing to cry right here in front of him. There's things that never get old to me. Amy's like, I wish she'd think about some of his clothes. She knows me, man. I wore stuff down the threadbare, and I'd say, baby, where's that old, where's that old cut-off hoodie that I have? She says, I don't know, lie. (laughs) See what? 
they some stuff that never get old. It never gets old to me. Sitting around the table. Popo, can I sit in your lap while we eat? I said, yeah, you're going to eat out of your own plate. Popo, can I sit next to you? And looking around my table. Seeing Martha and David over here. And everybody. And my, we got to get a bigger table. It never gets old. It never gets old. Watching that hand go up. It never gets old. Heath watching them. Oh, if God could send a new revival, not like one yesterday, Heath, that we've known, but one where people once again would crawl over a seat, crawl over people, crawl over anybody and anything just to get to Him. I'm not looking for yesterday's revival. I'm looking for a revival that's going to be so much greater. It never gets old. When they lay their life down, Brother Roger, it never gets old seeing a husband and wife get put back together. It never gets old seeing a prodigal come home. It never gets old seeing somebody trade yesterday for today and then trade today for a fantastic tomorrow. Man, it never gets old. I pray for things. Kenny probably at the top of the list. I said, God, don't ever take from me the passion that you've placed in me. Don't ever take me if there's just one. Don't ever take it. Today. How many of you need God today? Would you raise your hand? How many? Don't raise your hand if you need God today. How many of you need? You need something special today. You need God to do a miracle. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. So I think what I'm saying is that do you need Jesus today? Let's don't wait till tomorrow. I hear people say, oh, people have been saved, Mike. And people that will say something like, they get saved at 60. And I said, well, what is it? They said, oh, if I could have only started serving him. If I'd have got saved at 10. To think of all the joy I've missed. Isn't that beautiful? That's the reason today you can start living free. You can start living with joy. Don't try me. I get tried every Sunday. Try him. Put him to the test. Take it right back here to Calvary. Lord, remember me. <laughs> and that final part today. You're going to be with me in paradise. Wow, Beth. I could go into another 30 minutes. Y'all like, no, that's enough. Of paradise. Most of the time I say pray with me. I'm going to leave that up to you tonight. I do want to give an invitation. I don't want to give an invitation to me. I don't want to give an invitation to the message. I want to give an invitation to the altar. I want to give an invitation. I want to extend this on behalf of my King, of my Savior. And say that whatever you have, you can exchange it. Whatever's burdening you, you can give it to Him. I got scripture to back all this up. So tonight, can I invite you? Before I pray with you, before, uh, before we pray, can I just invite you to the altar and say, hey, you pray. Without bowing your head or anything else.
Come on. I'm inviting you. Come on. Come and give it to Jesus. Whatever it is you have tonight, Lord, break the curse. Take my sin. Whatever that it is, Lord, tonight, I want to give my life to you. I've been playing a game. Come. Come. And let's get this done here tonight. The altar's open. right get it right get it right give your life to Christ Christians you're going to get the same thing if you keep doing the same thing we need to believe that God is doing man something so wonderful so good and he wants to start it with you Breath that I 
Lord Jesus, we love you. God, I'm so thankful tonight that you've sowed the seeds, God. And, and whether it's anybody else, you've sowed it in mine. That God, you've sowed these seeds of the gospel so that we may reach others, God, for you. I pray, God, that you'd encourage everyone in this house. I pray, God, that you save those that are lost. Precious Holy Spirit, be relentless. Contend. Contend. For the souls, Lord, that are here, maybe that are away. God, those maybe that are watching online, and God, give us a, a fervency, to, a true fervency, God, to see people come to you. Lord, we're going to go ahead and believe for great things, and Lord, for the next time you have us appointed to be here, in the name of Jesus, I, I'm just going to go ahead and rebuke any thought of religion. God, I'm just going to go ahead and rebuke any, anything that would try to get a grip or get a hold. God, I know it's Mother's Day this Sunday, and we truly are. We're going we're gonna to celebrate mamas, but we're going to celebrate you for giving us mamas. So, Lord, as we get ready to leave, shake us. Shake us, God. Open our eyes to the harvest. We love you, Jesus. You're awesome. Amen and amen. God bless you. I love you. I love you. Be encouraged. Go make a difference. Go make a difference.